Next I'd like to address a mistake that I made in part 5 of this build series when I installed the bearings onto the crankshaft. And I followed the instructions from TPR uh, the best I could and installed them as it seemed that they were saying to install them. And then I got a couple of comments that I had installed the bearings backwards. And honestly when I got the first one I thought okay so this guy thinks he knows more than TPR um, you know because I figured their instructions had been pretty well on point um, other than that so I didn't have any reason to be suspicious of what they told me and I have no experience with the kinds of bearings that they're using but then I got into researching it a little more when a second person said it and I thought okay maybe there's merit to this so no offense to the first guy you know um, nothing against you I literally just I have a lot of YouTube comments of people that assume they know more than everybody else so I kinda thought it was just one of those guys um, and didn't put a whole lot of thought into it but let me go into this in a little more detail by showing you the bearings okay so what I've got here are two bearings they're both 6204 um, and they're both SKF Explorers but this is what the TPR 8060C kit came with um, it's a 6204TN9C3 and the TN9 is the critical part here that caused me an issue. C3 is just a clearance spec. Um, and again, this is just a 6204. It doesn't specify the clearance. It's a standard clearance bearing. Um, but the TN9, what that means is it has a polymer cage. So if you look at this, it's like a kind of plastic cage for the ball bearings in there. And then when you see this is a standard bearing, you can see you've got a metal cage. Now where the issue was for me, if you look at this standard bearing, it's got a metal cage. And the metal cage is present on both sides. It surrounds the balls there, basically. Doesn't really matter which way you put it. Um, metal cage is covering the actual ball bearings inside of there. But when you look at the TN9 bearing on this side you can see you've got the full covering of this polymer plastic cage if you flip it over the balls are actually exposed here um, you've basically got I would say a half cage it's really a little more than a half cage um, but you have sort of an open face on this side of the cage here um, so when I installed them, I installed them with the open face in toward the crankshaft. So if my hand is the crankshaft, here's the open face, I installed them this way. And as it turns out, you should install them with the open face outward. So crankshaft is my hand here, the closed face should be up against the crankshaft. Now, let me tell you why I did it that way, because I really, I honestly didn't know which way it should go. Because um, I, in my head, I could make out arguments for uh, either way making sense. So I just followed TPR's instructions. And let's look at those. So these are the English instructions for crankshaft assembly in the uh, TPR manual that comes with the kit. And you can see here on D, it says remove the bearings with the markup towards the crankshaft conrod. Now, it's improper to say remove, but if you go through the other steps, they've already told you to remove the original bearings and seals, clean everything, and then heat the bearings. So clearly that's when they're ready to put the bearings on, so it seems that remove would be a mistake. But it tells you markup towards the crankshaft conrod. So, if I look at this bearing, that was included with a the kit there are markings here on this side I'm not sure that they show up in the camera very well but there are definitely the markings on this side and that is the open face kind of side of the bearing where you can actually see the ball bearings in there and just so you can tell there's no markings on this side so what I did was install it so that these markings face the crankshaft and that leaves the open side toward the crankshaft. 
it turns out that they should be out away from the crankshaft but if you look at those instructions it says remove well it says bearings with the markup toward the crankshaft and to me that would be the markup the markings on here I would assume they meant to be the markup so that is precisely why I installed the bearings the way that I did um, then I got curious uh, this manual has instructions in multiple languages but I thought well I believe TPR is an Italian company I wouldn't swear to it but uh, it does say motoparts.it up here so I assume them to be Italian and most likely these were originally written in Italian so I was just curious I entered D here which would be the same which would correspond to the uh, instruction in question in English on uh, Google Translate and what it said was fit the bearings with the marking turned toward the embossing so that really is kind of confusing to me anyway and wasn't of any help but um, what I did was I actually asked scootertuning.ca uh, because I know they deal with a lot of stuff a lot of high-end stuff and uh, they sell bearings like this how they should be installed to be installed properly because I wanted to know from a good source and they confirmed what the two comments had said that the open side needs to be away from the crankshaft so I in fact indeed did install my bearings uh, backwards or the wrong way out whatever you want to say so mine are installed so this is facing outward and this should have been facing outward and what that would do I would be to allow easier oiling um, because obviously this is open um, and this would be pressed up against the crank and be harder to oil which was actually why I thought maybe it made sense because I thought well if you push this up against the crank where it's hard for it to get oil and then you left these faces open um, any oil that got in there would have an easier time of lubricating that bearing but apparently that's the wrong idea and these should be indeed facing out um, just another note while I've got the two bearings sitting here uh, it seems that more or less the uh, advantage of this bearing the polymer cage bearing is that it is a lower friction bearing so you might free up some small fraction of a horsepower that way but that's also supposed to generate less heat within the bearing as well um, and then this would be the more resilient bearing the uh, double-sided steel cage kind of bearings would be more resistant to heat they can take higher temperatures um, and things like that but this one would free up some friction and maybe make a little less heat and they say they could last longer in uh, these high RPM racing kind of applications so my apologies um, I always try to give you guys good information the best I can as you saw I was trying to follow the instructions from TPR thinking their engineers knew what they were talking about but apparently there's some uh, major issues in translation at very least or at least my understanding of of their translations um, so I put a note on that video it shows up as a little poll or info thing in the corner because um, YouTube took away annotations apparently a while ago but I tried to make a note of it in that video but I definitely wanted to point it out um, here just to clear that up for anybody uh, building something like this in the future oh and I suppose I should tell you my plan for dealing with these backward bearings and I have a very thorough plan which involves doing absolutely nothing about it at this point my logic is they've been in there for around 500 miles at this point I haven't tracked it exactly because I can't reset the odometer um, the total odometer mileage on the trail tech vapor but I know I did about 300 miles at the car shows and I know I've done around 200 um, with the testing tuning and then riding over to the friend's house the other day it's somewhere around 200 so basically I've got 500 miles or so on it it's given me absolutely no signs of trouble it's not making noise nothing um, so unless it does show me 
some sort of symptom uh, that there's something wrong, don't really plan to mess with it. Um, if I have to take the engine totally apart for some reason, um, while I'm in there, I absolutely will put the new bearings on, what I believe to be the proper way now. But even if I'm messing with the top end or something, I doubt that I'm going to change them around. Um, so, at worst, this will be some kind of failed experiment, uh, unintentional experiment. But they may actually last okay. And also, I'm running 32 to 1, so 4 ounces per gallon of gas which is more than TPR even recommends in their guide. So there's quite a lot of oil in there. Um, and hopefully they'll be okay. But if not, I'll let you know.